Hey guys, video time. Not sure if you can even see me in here or not. Um, but I thought I'd bring you on a video here. I haven't seen anything online about how to do this. This is not a how-to, of course. Uh, but this is how I'm going to do it. Um, I'm putting three-point retractable seatbelts in my 56 Chevy wagon. And um, I'm at a point where I'm going to shoot a little video just kind of show you where I'm at and how I got there. So I um, apologize for the lighting in advance. So what I did is I actually had the seat in here. And I compared it to my, my pickup, how high the D-ring actually is on the seatbelt when I'm sitting in the seat. It was approximately 4 inches. So with the bench seat in the 56, I did the same thing. Measured approximately 4 inches off of my shoulder. And uh, this is what I came up with here. Um, let's shoot around here a little bit. It's kind of uncomfortable in here. but um, So here's what I came up with. Um, it's 8 inches from from this corner up here um, down so um, that's where it came out to be and I took a uh, I marked it of course got a, a nut that matches the bolt the shouldered bolt that's in the D-ring that comes supplied with the universal seat belt used a, a marked it of course eighth inch pilot hole and then used a three quarter inch um, rota brooch could also use a hole saw to cut through this bead here. I wish I had a better way to hold the light here. I just don't. Um, so you'll see that raised rib that runs down the middle here. So I basically just took a chunk out of that. And the nut is actually thick enough that I bottomed it out on the inner, like, flat part of it. And it's completely flush here. It works out perfect. So with a little trimming uh, with a cutoff wheel and a die grinder, um, and a wire wheel to get some bare metal. Um, I have that nut placed where I want it. I'll clamp it with a vice grip and burn it in all the way around really, really good. And um, I don't see why that wouldn't be as safe as any factory install, um, other than not having a backer plate on it. But I'm not going to cut this pillar apart for that. I am confident that I can get a good weld on that all the way around, that if I ever get in an accident, Chances are this nut is going to be the least of my worries. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and burn that in. And I'll bring you another video uh, when it's all done. Uh, I might even, when I do the other side, I might just set up a tripod and you can maybe come along for the ride on the process how I do it. But like I said, nothing out there. I don't know if it's because of liability reasons. Again, this is not a how-to. This is how I do. So um, this is what I'm doing so I can put three-point seat belts. The retractor end, which is going to go down here, as of right now, I think what I'm going to end up doing is welding a piece of flat stock up on this pinch and then bolting that retractor to that flat bracket. So there's still room for my upholstery to get in here and my, um, what you call it, the... the tack strips and all that stuff um, I'm undecided on the center on the on the female ends of the belts yet haven't gotten that far yet I'm gonna weld both of these upper d-ring nuts in first and then I'm gonna put the seat back in the car so I can kind of see what's going on as far as placement um, but uh, I originally was gonna put the retractor to here but I am unsure of its structural stability down here it's been patched in the past so I'm gonna put it to the known good floor and the flange for the rocker it's the strongest point better than the sheet metal floor so all right I'm gonna bring you back here on another video um, when I am satisfied with what I got going on so this is um, part one of uh, tri-5 Chevy three-point seatbelt install See you soon.